Hi guys, welcome to my DIY motion simulator build channel. Either welcome or welcome back, either the case. What we've been doing lately is putting together this two degree of seat, uh, freedom seat mover. But we initially, we put it up with some really small windshield wiper motors. And you know, it worked, but it wasn't quite as powerful as I wanted it to be. So I got these, uh, these uh, wheelchair motors off of eBay. I uh, didn't know much about them, but we got them in here. They're, these are 24 volts, so we had to switch from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system. And these are actually gonna plug in to the wall. So I've got two different converters. They're 25 amp converters. I have the links in the description. If you follow along on some of these videos, I'm really just trying to show you that you can do it yourself. I'm just trying to take you step by step, taking our time and getting these things done correctly. Now, you could uh, just go out and buy something like this from, uh, and it might be better for the DOF reality thing, but you know what? That's still pretty expensive. You can get in ground floor. We're probably in, this was 60. Um, we're in for like maybe 250. That ain't much really ain't much all right guys i just want to break into the normally scheduled show here just to say thanks to each and every one of you because i've just been qualified for this thing called super thanks and this is like something that you would see on maybe jimmy b's uh his live broadcast where you just see like people putting uh, a couple bucks here a couple bucks there whatever on his live live stream well i don't do any live streams really haven't been thinking about it but whatever i qualify for having you know the same same type of thing on all these videos and look if you're if i'm not saying you have to do anything but if you want to hey it's available um if you find value out of this if i'm saving you some money if i'm saving you a headache um, or if I'm causing you a headache, I don't know. Try it out. Um, and hey, so every little bit of money that goes into that super thanks thing, I'm gonna put it back into the channel on equipment. I'm gonna test the equipment. And I've been thinking, you know, at the end of the year, I'm gonna give away one of these controller systems. Now, if this one doesn't end up blowing up, probably won't, it'll probably be fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this away. I'll put, if you do the super thanks thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and put your name on one of the random drawings like I did last December for when I was giving away the, uh, with, thank you for Dustin giving me the licenses for the uh, SimTools Pro lifetime licenses. Thanks again, Dustin, I do appreciate it. Uh, I'm gonna do the same type of thing, but I'll just give away one of these uh, these uh, controllers, the IBTs, the Arduino, everything already programmed and ready to go. So, hey, just want to let you know and say thanks to you guys. I got the super thanks thing, so hopefully it, it works and hopefully we can grow the channel a little bit better. If you don't want to do that, at least maybe like or subscribe. All right, Dave out. Now, last time we built the controller box, we wired it all up, we put, uh, Right now I've got the Arduino in here. We've got two IBT uh, motion controllers. That's gonna control the motors. So these, uh, these big old motors here, uh, we also have a 24 volt fan and everything's gonna run off of these 24 volt plug-in power supplies. Now, if you've seen any of the other videos, I kind of look at a project like, hey, what's the next step? So. Even if it's a difficult step, like, you know, getting something and, and welding up these motors, making the motor mounts and things like that. Well, you know, it just takes time and it needs to be done. All right, so I hope you're still with me. I know a lot of people click off in the first what, 10 seconds of a video. I don't know, maybe I'm an old guy. Maybe they're just clicking on looking for something else. But either way, the people that do stay, I hope that you're enjoying it. And judging by the comments and anything that you guys ask, I try to answer it or at least put that in the pipeline so maybe later I can do a video on it. Um, anyway, so 
we're gonna get these potentiometers mounted up, or I mean, wired up to the Arduino. Okay, so the control box is done. We have these two little uh, orange and yellow wires. These are gonna go, these are connected to A0 and A1, and these need to connect to the potentiometers. And like I connected up the red already, you wanna run heat shrink so that you don't um, I have a short. All right, so here's that first step. We got the power and the uh, control wires. They're, they're meeting right here, going to the uh, potentiometer, and then the purple wire is just jumpering straight on over. It's not touching this potentiometer. You can see that the power and the ground are uh, uh, landing here and then continuing on and they're gonna continue on to the other side. All right, so here's the last one. Yeah, that looks good. All right, guys, so we're gonna go over how to uh, set up this stuff with the software so that we can get the uh, um, all of potentiometers to work with all the different the things the Arduino and everything all right so right now we have to find out what com port our Arduino is sitting on so I just go to control panel like I said this is Windows 7 it's a very old uh, system and we're gonna go to system and then device manager now Windows 10 is gonna be a little bit different but in the in the uh, in Windows 10 there is a device manager thing and we need to find out what COM port our Arduino is on. Now right here it says it's on COM port 5. I'm gonna walk around and unplug I'm unplugging the Arduino, Arduino or at least the USB and we'll take a look real quick. Uh, I gotta close this down and right now on COM ports, it's not even showing the Arduino. So I'm just saying this, you gotta know what port it's on. Um, in this particular computer, there's three different places to plug it in. All right, so I plug the thing in and we notice a change. All right, so it says it's on COM5. So all the communications is gonna be on COM5 and we need to remember that. So let's close this stuff down and let's go to, well, first of all, let's open up our SM3, SMC3 utility file. Um, you download it, it's a free file. I think I'll have the link in the description, either that or you can search for it. And when you unzip it, you get these two different, uh, these two different fi uh, files. This one is the configuration files, SMC3 utilities. And we want to change that from whatever COM port it says, we want to change it to five because that's where this computer is finding the Arduino on. So we'll go file and save. Now, we don't, we don't want to open up the SMC3 utilities right now because it, it, it just won't work yet. So if you do open it up, this is what you're going to get. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And then it's, it's going to say, oh, okay, look down here. It's on COM5, okay, but it can't establish communication with it. And it can't establish communication with uh, the Arduino because even though SMC3 thinks it's on COM5, we haven't put anything into the Arduino yet. So we have to go to the Arduino page and download the IDE and then put in the software that's going to control all this stuff. Then SMC3, we build to run it. So let's go, let's uh, update the Arduino real quick. Okay guys, after you download and install the uh, Arduino IDE, I find it right here. The application is Arduino and it's the application. We don't need to do anything yet. Um, I just want to start up the IDE program. And right now, the sketch that it, that it says it has um, is called the Blink program. And I'll, I'll show you that. We want to make sure that, A, that we can see our board. 
Okay, so I'm looking here, COM5. Okay, so that's good. That's all we need to do. So we should be able to write to this, uh, write our program to this, uh, to the Arduino. Uh, hopefully this isn't too uh, bad for you. Okay, so the, on this program, is basically it's going to blink the LED. Um, it's going to write it for one second, and then it's going to turn it off for one second. So let's take a look at it. It's on for one second, off for one second, on for one second, off for one second. So let's see if we can change that. Let's make it um, like an eighth of a second, just to see if we, we're talking to the board and it's reacting. So let's do that. Here we go. We're going to, instead of writing it for um, 1,000 milliseconds, let's, let's go for 100 milliseconds. One. I told you this is a slow old computer. So we're going to write it high for 100. That's a tenth of a second. So it should go bup, 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 bup. All right. So all we need to do is file. Well, let's see if we file. Dang it. Boy, I hate this computer. Sketch. Let's just go. Let's go upload. Let's just see what happens. So it's compiling the sketch. Now this computer is actually pretty old so it takes a long time for it to do anything even something simple like this it just and if you've got a better computer it's going to go much faster now it does say that we are on com5 it's almost done compiling the sketch i wish i had one of those uh four hour later things all right so we're looking here at this this white there's no red stuff here so it's done uploading. It should. Let's take a look at that. Just so we're looking at live time. Look at that thing go. Blinking like a champ. Tenth of a second. All right, so now we know that, A, we can communicate from here to the Arduino. Now let's go uh, download the sketch that we need for the Arduino to control the motion software. Uh, that's going to go into the SMC3. So we want to go on to xsimulator.net, download the software that we need. I got a link in the description, and we're going to plug it in and burn it into the Arduino. It's just that simple. All right, so we're going to want to do the first thing, download SMC3 software, the smc3.ino. And we're going to open it with the Arduino and we're going to edit the code to uh, mode 2. Um, I'll show you how to do that. And I mean we've been using this diagram the whole time to to draw it up or to wire it up. Uh, and then we'll be using this part but let's get that code into the Arduino right now. Got to scroll down to the entire bottom of the page. And we have modified the blink tutorial for a hundred milliseconds, so a tenth of a second. Now we want to open up the smc3.ino file, um, and that is going to change all this out. And you want to look here, it's probably not going to say mode two, it's probably going to say mode one. So we want to change it like it says to mode two so i'm going to do that right here and that's really that's all you need to do to work with these uh ibt2 h bridges so all we need to do is either file and save it or we could just go ahead and upload it and see if it works so it's once again it's compiling and it does say that it's on com5 Okay, we got no red lines. We just have everything that's good and green. Let's see if this thing is still blinking like crazy. Nope, not doing a dang thing. All right, so that's really good news. The uh, SMC3 utility software INO file is now in the Arduino. Now we should be able to open up 
the SMC3 software and um, you know, kind of play around with this thing. Plug it in, see what works, how to set it up. Let's do it. All right, guys, so let's see if we can get this thing running. What I've done is we're going to turn it on one motor at a time. And like I said before, I don't have these hooked up in case they spin around and around. And, you know, possibly I have this potentiometer is actually supposed to be that one or something, something weird. Anyway, let's plug it in one motor at a time and see what happens. So I have motor two unplugged. Let's turn it on. All right, so the fan's spinning. Uh, let's turn our attention towards the SMC3. So for SMC3, um, the initial setups I've got a pulse width minimum of 12, maximum of 60, and reverse of 50. This should start off at um, zero or 100, and just bump it. Um, what I did was I bumped it up to 400. Now no nothing's moving yet, so I'm going to move the potentiometer. We want to make sure that the green line is moving. So, okay, so the green line is moving, that's good. Now we just want to bump up the uh, maximum, just a little bit slowly. So I put it on step of 10, and you can set this to 50, 100, uh, 50 or 100. But we don't want to do that. We just want to do it like 10 increments at a time. I have this at 60. At some point, the blue line, or the motor, is going to try to want to intersect with the green line. So, 70. Okay, so it's it just moved. All right, let's let's turn this back down to 60. I turned it down to 50. All right, I'm going to move potentiometer. So you see the green line is moving way up here. Now, as I increase the pulse width maximum to 50. Nothing's happening. I'm getting a little bit of yellow. That is the um, pulse width. Now let's, let's move it up to 60. Okay, still nothing. Let me move it up to 70, see what happens. Okay, so it's moving. And if I move this, it's moving real slow. Right now, it, it's, it seems to be working. It's moving very slowly because we don't have much pulse width. It's only on 70. It can go to like 255. I don't think we want to do that much. We just want to get a nice smooth signal. All right, so right now we can come over here since we know it's moving and we can adjust the potentiometer and it, it does move the thing. Let's turn it up to 80. And let's go over here to motion. So what it's going to do is it's going to create like a random sine wave. And we're going to see how the motor tracks. Okay, so right now I'm looking at the green line. So that's the potentiometer. The motor's not, it's not quite exactly the same. So we want to kind of modify the parameters just a bit. Let's turn it up to 90. Okay, so as you can see at 90, it's it's following, they're, they're much closer together. So it... So at 90, they're much closer together. So if I move it back down to 80 and 70, 70, the, the, they're just not keeping together. So we need a little bit of pulse width, turn it to 80, and now 90. It's okay, let's try 100. Seems to be okay. It's a, it's got a lot more power to the motor. I'm going to turn it back down to 90. Now we we want the the sample rate to be at 35 kilohertz. That's going to be right here. Uh, if we turn it down to 30, it's not sampling it as much. If we turn it down to 25, hmm, it's definitely it's only at 25 kilohertz, which is kind of like an old slow. Uh, 8386 computer so we can we can go a little bit higher because we max it out at 35 that's all you can do pulse with minimum so let's just leave this at say 12 if we went a little bit higher it's just going to be a uh, it's going to more refer to this yellow line so so if I crank the minimum up more than 40 
See, I'm starting to get this weird shaky stuff. I don't really like that. I don't think it's good. So I'm just going to turn it back down to maybe 40. And it's going to depend on your motors, how these things work out. We'll try this. The reverse. We're going to set that exactly the same. And once again, I didn't mess with the KS, KD, or KI. You can look these values up. If you're having some problems, go on xsimulator.net and talk to the guys about that. All right, so let's slip over to motor number two. We'll just turn this thing back into motor mode. And we'll go to motor two. All right, as you can see on motor two, right now, I have the potentiometer and I have the motor reading. I'm at 400 way down at 23 here and 50 here now you can copy the settings from say motor one over to motor two and motor three if you want right there but let's just mess around with motor two and put it on um one other thing if this if the motor shuts off and and we'll go over this in a, just a few minutes if it goes to off and nothing's going on most likely it exceeded either the clip limits, which is this uh, orange, or the maximum limits. And you can set those right here. So, so let's go clip limits. Let's take a look at what it's doing. We'll put it right about there. I'll bring it back down. And max, max limits are, is the red line. Okay, so the red line. So... If it hits the clip limits, it's going to try to reverse the motor and get it so it doesn't hit maximum limits. If it hits the maximum limits, it's just going to shut off the motor. All right, let's take a look at motor two. We're on, uh, let's just try to increase this a little bit. All right, so motor two is way over there. I'm going to plug it in. Okay, it's on. Nothing is moving yet. I'm going to go ahead and turn up the pulse width maximum. See if I can get a motion out of this, this lever arm right here. Okay, so it's moving. And once again, if I move the potentiometer, it's going to try to chase... The direction of the potentiometer um, so basically it's slipping over the top of this uh, little uh, rod thing that I pulled out of the, the shaft of the motor and it's moving pretty slow all right so we're not gonna hook the seat up yet but we're gonna put the motor 2 on motion and just see what happens we probably have to bump up the uh, pulse um, with or pulse maximum just to get that thing to move a little bit faster and once again we can adjust it once we get a little bit of load on the seat everything seems to be running fine the fan is running and you always want to run these with a fan um, or you end up burning out your IBTs all right so I'm going to increase uh, actually I'm going to put it on motion See what happens all right so as i look at the reading between the potentiometer which is the green line and the motor position and the motor itself the green line is they're separating they're not staying like right where they're supposed to be so we're going to turn up the pulse width maximum just a little bit Okay, so now they're a little bit closer. I've got this on 93. Put it on 100. It's probably okay. I'm gonna move this down just to 100. Um, minimum pulse width, I forget what we had on before, but we don't want too much. 25, I think we had it on. All right, so now that line is pretty close. There's some issues every now and again. 
I'm not sure why that's caused. But with the SMC3 software, you can really only test one motor at a time. And basically what this is doing, when we load up SIM tools, it's going to be um, using this to communicate and set up everything inside of SIM tools to run. So, all right, this looks okay. And if we switch it over to motor one, yeah, looks okay there. All right, guys, I've left the thing running for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. Nothing's warm, fan's blowing, um, and we're on motor one. I could try to stall it by hand, but I, it doesn't seem like I really can. But, you know, we never know. We can always mess around with these settings and get them a little bit more powerful um, and just see what happens. But right now, I'm going to show you what it's like. I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to do it just because you need to know if you set your, uh, if your motors are reversed, what happens and what it looks like. So this is a common problem. I've done it probably four times where, you know, I set everything up and as soon as the potentiometer moves, the motor just takes off. Well, they ain't gonna work like that. So I'll show you what you need to do to fix that. All right, so I have all the power off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, do some, I'm gonna be working on motor one. It's easier for you to see. And I'm just gonna switch the, the wires, not the 12 volts that are going to it, but the, but the, the wires that actually go to the motor because you may end up hooking them up because you don't, you don't know which way the thing is going to take off to begin with. So there we go. All I did was switch these motors and uh, let's just see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the things back in. Basically, you just want to do these steps one at a time. I'm gonna go back here. I'm plugging in the Arduino. And I'm just gonna turn it on. All right, so I'm getting some weird stuff going on right here. And it shuts off. So let's start up SMC3. And something like this might happen to you. You don't know. Okay, so if you look at the reading for the potentiometer, green, 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 it's not working right. So I'm going to try to move it. Oh, gosh. So I'm not even in the sweet spot. So what I mean by the sweet spot is that it's 180 degrees. So, so there's only going to be half of the potentiometer that's going to have a reading. The rest is going to be wide open. So I'm just going to turn it around. Keep turning it. So I'm just keep turning it until I start getting um, something smooth coming out of here. Okay, so maybe it was just because um, whatever. Maybe it wasn't reading it right. Let's just see what happens if I turn it on motion. Turn it on motion. And the, the spikes seem to be going the wrong direction. I'm not really sure. So this could happen to you where you, it just goes crazy. What I would suggest is that double check your wiring. Try to make sure that... Uh, now I know I wired this one backwards for this demonstration. I'm going to shut it off again. And I'll wait for it to shut off. I'm going to just put this on motor one and on monitor mode. All right. Once again, I'm going to check the potentiometer, make sure that the, the green line is moving. And before, I had the pulse width lower. So let's. I'm just going to go ahead and crank this thing down. Step up 10. I'm going to crank it down to like 40 and 40. 
turn it back on. All right, so I've got no movement right now, but that's because the pulse width max is very, very low. Remember, we started increasing it, and it's moving. Seems to be okay, but what happened, and catch this, I moved it, and instead of coming along the blue line, it separated. So every time I move the potentiometer, it's separating. So that indicates to me the motor is wired backwards. Let's take a closer look. All right, obviously somebody has a big issue and likes to beep their horn. All right, so I'm gonna move the potentiometer real quick. Try to move it down to the middle and it never wants to move. I never can move it to the middle for whatever reason. It just takes off. That's because the motor is going in an opposite direction. You know, if that does happen to you, you turn it on, you're, you're firing up your first motor and you only have power to one of them and you fire up your first motor and you get just a little bit of movement. And then when you try to move the potentiometer to adjust it just a little bit to center or whatever, and it goes the other direction, or you turn it on and it just starts going rah. Okay, you gotta stop. The, the wires to the motor need to be flipped. Now, this is not the 12 volts going to the IBTs from the power supplies. That needs to stay positive and negative. The motor wires, the wires that are, are M, that doesn't matter. So you can you can just unscrew them like I'm doing right here and uh, just go ahead and flip them. You know, make sure everything's off, start it back up. Once you solve that little problem, you're gonna be happy because if it happens right away, you're gonna be like, what the heck? Did, why did Dave tell me to do all these things when it doesn't work? Obviously it doesn't work. Well, no, it does work. It's just something like that does happen. And if I think of it, I'll make a video in the future that'll show like all the different little weird problems I've had. Now there's not too many of them, but you know, you can have problems. That's, that's probably the biggest, weirdest one. All right, so let me flip those wires and we'll get it back to normal again and hook up the seat. Okay, so I flip the wires, turn it on, fan is spinning. You always make sure the fan is spinning. Uh, motor one isn't doing anything and I can still move it. So real quick, let's set up the, the green line, which is the potentiometer reading. I have the seat, like maybe here would be the middle. I'm not sure. When we hook these things up to the seat, we'll be able to tell. So anyway, I just don't want the thing going crazy and separating. All right, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this down here just a little bit and I'm gonna turn up the pulse width again. Okay, so now it's starting to move and it's staying right with it instead of going opposite directions. It's staying right with it. Now I should be able to adjust potentiometer position with no problem. Now I think we had this on like 100 or 90 so let's just turn that up. 100, go in reverse, 100. We'll leave the minimum at 40, and we're at 35 kilohertz. Once again, here's your limits. The orange is uh, clip limits, and the red is max limits. So I'm gonna put it on motion. Seems to be working okay. Now, as you can see, the, let me put a mark. Put a quick mark on here. Okay, so you can see that mark. So the potentiometer offers no resistance. It's the motor that's moving. The potentiometer is reading where it is, sending that signal back to the Arduino. All right, so I'm gonna shut this down. Now put this on. All right, guys, so we have this thing running. We got two 24 volt, 25 amp power supplies. We have our Arduino fan system that um, I went through on showing you how I built this thing. It's a 24 volt fan. We got two, uh, one each, 
um, 15 amp fuses inside. Both the motors are operating, they're set up. Um, everything seems to be working okay. Now we haven't run it under like a big load yet. And we have to wait till next video for that, sorry. But just getting it to this point, I missed like three weeks just by life happening. Just <laughs> couldn't do it. So this thing kind of just sat there up on the sawhorses for like the past three weeks. Um, got it going though today. And as you can see, if I put them on uh, motion, so we're going to look at this one here. Now their motion, it's not going to be smooth like a game, but because it's, it's just kind of a random thing going on. But that's uh, the motor one. If I put it on motor two for motion, motor two is going. Seems to be just a little bit of flex with this plastic pan. I'm happy I got the plastic pan, but it could be a little bit more stable without it. I just needed a, a place to mount these devices. I mean, you can, you can see the footprint. It's pretty small. I don't have it hooked to the um, the front of the rig. The front of the rig is way over there still. But uh, this will at least we'll be able to know if we end up blowing up these 24 volt power supplies or not. Um, I could do a quick load test, but it's probably going to be really low. Let's do that real quick, and then let's end the video. Ooh, I cut those wires a little short to do an AC amp test, so I'm just going to have to do a DC. So I've got, um, I don't know if you can see it, amps DC. And I'm going to zero it. Amps DC, zero. Okay, so I'm going to run this thing, see what it says. The 0.62, it's like nothing. Now before, 0 0.8, 0 0.62. You know, before the whole thing was, remember it was spinning around and around and around. And I can, I can see some flex between uh, the metal and and this plastic pan. I don't know if I want to address that or not. Plus, I'm not even sure if I have all the motor bolts like really tight. Nah. Hey, all I can say is it's, it's running. You know, she's pretty heavy. Still gotta put the. I gotta do something about this because this is not gonna hack it for me. This this wiggle factor. But this is not too bad. Um, so anyway, um, I'll try to get a video out. I ain't gonna promise I'm gonna do it today, tomorrow. That ain't gonna happen. I work all week. But uh, maybe next weekend I can get this thing under load, um, up in Live for Speed, in Sim Tools. Like, but it, but if you can't wait. Check out some of those other videos that I've done. Um, been through this two other times, or maybe three other times. But this one here, yeah, it probably is going to be good enough for a seat mover. Don't know if it's going to be good enough for a full frame. Don't know. This is new for me, this 24 volt thing. We got it working. Now you know that IBTs can run off of 24 volts. So I think their operating range is like. I don't know, eight, uh, eight volts to 36 or something like that. You can look that up, but at least it was 24. I know they run on 12 because I've been using the same three IBTs on my big rig for, I don't know, now two and a half years. And we've been racing the heck out of that thing recently. <laughs> at least I have been <laughs> trying to keep up with the Sir Spats gaming guys um, for the Gentleman's League Challenge races. And those are, those races are running, there's a, about a 30 minute uh, practice, and 15 minute qualify, then two 15 minute races. And the thing's running the whole time. And, and I forget to shut it off, it's running all, you know, all night and stuff like that. Now that's DC battery powered. Essentially this is DC, but we've got these two AC converters. So I'm plugging them into the wall, 
you know if this does work out this would be pretty cool because you can bring this thing inside no battery no nothing it may need batteries i don't know yet but so check in next time sorry for being long-winded i'm gonna try to get this thing edited hey happy mother's day to all the mothers um yeah dave out oh god i'm so old <laughs>